it's still an happy period. We are still celebrating with Salah, and Jide um, is an Araji. Um, <laughs> Although he's not here with my salad meat, <laughs> but he has told me that uh, after the program, he's sending um, the courier to bring it. Jide, you are welcome to the program. Mr. Bond, thank you for having me. I can't remember when I promised you that, but let's see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll first of all start with... Um, I noticed that you've been promoting a certain movie now, Inspector... Inspector Jero, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us what Inspector Jero is? Well, Inspector Jero is my latest baby that the world is yet to see. I'm not I'm a producer. I write, I produce, I direct and stuff, but I don't get to produce all the time because I really don't know how to um I don't say I don't know how to manage productions, but you know how production is today. If you really want to produce a good movie, it takes a lot of funds and all that. And um, I would not like my crew members or my actors to suffer the deficiency in my budget and stuff. So I take my time, regardless of the um, value or the kind of movie I'm shooting, even if it's a short film, I like to treat everybody right, my crew, my actors and everything. So that's why I really don't produce all the time. So when the idea of Inspector Jero came on, I'm like, no, I have to do this. So I had a fantastic writer and director. We cooked this together, Bjorn Jimo. I don't want to say too much about it. Just keep your fingers crossed. Inspector Joe is a different GDR opener entirely. And I bet the world will love it. Is it a YouTube movie? It's a great film. When it's out, I'll let the world know the platform is coming on. Oh, There's oh. nothing like a YouTube movie. What I mean is, is, are you making the movie for... Uh, I I, ma I made a great film, but I don't know what platform is coming up on yet. Okay. Yeah. So, tell us, um, how did acting start for you? Well, we can't be tired of saying this, but then um, over two decades now in the industry, but it's not something I like to say all the time because it's not how far, but how well. But I just want to say, thank, I just want to appreciate God for how far the journey has been. Uh, but the journey actually started with Wild Adenga Productions mm -hmm. in 20, 2003, to be precise, yes. So that was how the journey started for me. I was more of a super proper person. I did a lot with um, Wild Adenuga, uh, Mr. Benson, may so rest in peace, AK Media, you know, and a couple of other super props like that, Akin Akindele and the likes, you understand? So... Then later I felt, okay, fine, it would be nice to do something in your mother tongue as well. So that was why I ventured into Yoruba movie. And you know how it is, once they like you, and oh, I think I like this guy. Let's have him. So that's how I started doing more of Yoruba movies and all that. But then I'm still open to other productions, regardless of the language. As long as you can teach me, I'll give it to you. How did um, the switch from being, I'm sure that the first, your first set of production, the way you mentioned it, were mostly series. Yes. How did you switch? How did you cope with the switch? Well, for me, it was the only challenge I have is just the um, the welfare, remuneration, and all that. But for me, if you are an actor that actually started from soap purpose, you are, I, I'm sorry, but I see you as a well-groomed actor because that's where discipline, stage, series, and all that. Because you can imagine you being on a movie set, on a production for like two months, three months, not stepping out of the camp, so you're all you're just about the movie you're doing at the moment, so it's beyond you at that time because you can't live until you're done. You understand? So it's like you live in your comfort zone to go be a part of to go join another family, to go establish another family. You understand what I mean? It's be different from you going on a set four or five days, you're done. This one is months, sometimes a month, sometimes two months, sometimes more. It depends on the length of the the series you're filming so it was fun for me so switching was very easy it's like the movie is like child's play for me yeah i see a lot of movies so i've seen you i'm, I'm sure that i would have seen you in more than 50 70 movies you understand and one of the things that i always ask is how do you cope uh, i know that you are a family man okay how do you cope being in so m much movies in a year and also trying to balance at home because if you are in if i've seen in a year you i'm sure you make more than 30 40 movies in okay. a year 
So if in a year you make 30, 40 movies, how do you cope being an actor? You know, if you go to work normally, you go night to five and come back. But sometimes you go away, you're in Oshobo shooting today, you're in Igebo day tomorrow. Well, to start with, I would say um, remuneration. Is, I, I don't jump at the jobs because I really want to be on every job. One, you don't find me on every job. And another reason is because our remuneration is not really so high on all the jobs like that. And you need to do a lot to be able to put food on your table to do all that. So that's why we need to take as many as we can. Then another thing I would say is I'm a family-oriented person. Aside movie sets, the next place you see me is with the family. You understand? So every of my free time, you see me in the house. And some people even know, some producers know, they will say, give me, on my schedule I have it, stay at home. It's on my schedule. I have two, three days I want to stay at home. Some readers will say, oh, they're for me, stay at home here now. Because they already know me. You understand? So I'm not really, the, if it's not about movie, if it's not family, if it's not work, I, I'm not the kind of person that when I'm free, I, you see me jumping around unnecessarily. It's either I go for a function that has to do with the industry or family or I'm home. You understand? So... I can even say I'm more homely than people who even sleep at home every day. We have some people who go to work every day, go to the, but then I'm more closer to my family than even some of them. Because some of those people, okay, the, the only difference is they sleep on their bed every night. But me, once I'm home, two days, three days, they will feel me. A lot of people wonder, Did, how do you shoot your content, all these kids? That's what I do with my time. I'm in the house. Do you understand? So I use it to bond with the family, to do everything I have to do. I play, I cook, I, you know, that's it. You cook? Yes. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Tell me about that. <laughs> no, don't let us go. <laughs> I'm just telling you that I'm, I'm homely. Forget about the fact that I'm always on set. I'm still a very homely person. Okay. Now, let's come about, um, talk about Nolimu deeply. I've spoken to a lot of people. I've also experienced a lot of uh, what I want to ask you. Okay. A lot of people believe that in Nollywood to survive, except especially at the teaching um, stage. Okay. You need to belong to a carcass, sort of, to be able to, that it's, those carcass are the ones that will be calling you more before you blow. Were you a victim of the, or do you, have you seen it happen? Well, maybe if I was part of a carcass, I would have grown bigger than this. Maybe. I thank God for where I am and where I'm still going. But maybe if I was, I'm not a carcass person. But you see it happen in the industry. It does. It Has it affected you sometimes? That's why I said maybe if I, if I was a part of the caucus, maybe I would have grown bigger because I've got the craft. I know the I know my onions and I know um some extent I'm I'm good with the craft, you understand? So maybe if I was probably in your caucus or in Big Sam's caucus, I would have been in all the big movies that has been shooting and stuff. Maybe that is affecting me, but I'm not a caucus person because I really don't like routine. I don't like routine. I don't like it's it's not my thing, you understand? So and you know how it is when you're part of a caucus and stuff, there'll be routines and there'll be stuff, oh, don't, don't, don't talk to this person, don't me. That's not me. I want to live a free life, you understand? I grew up not being free enough, so now that I'm grown, I want to have my freedom, you understand? So I can't I can be caged. I don't want to be caged. She gets so. Um, um, GD, um, it's uh, so good to be here with you. Thank you, sir. Um, um, I like the question he asked, but maybe I would have asked it differently. Do you think belonging to a clique, maybe a training class, a, I mean, the way Abijimo has it, the way Odun has it, and the way Femi Adibayo has it, Mui Adibayo has the same thing, that, that uh, clique, it could be student-master relationship. I'm, I'm sure that's what um, Mr. Oloke to him meant. Do you think it would have changed the trajectory of your career? I don't think so. You can be a part of a training school and not be as good as somebody who doesn't even know anybody. So it's about your craft to start with. It doesn't matter where. We have a lot of people who actually belonged, who were actually members or students from some of these, and they're nowhere to be found today. Ask all of them, okay, if they have 100 students, how many of their students are actually doing very well in the industry? Okay. I would have actually started a school a long time ago. I said, I don't want to have a school where I don't have enough time to groom people and to even give them something to ride on after. Okay, um, I have a very um, sensitive question to her, but before I go there, I would say this. Would you think that you are an achiever? Um, I was a little taken aback when you said you spent 20 years in the industry. Would you think that um, just opposing the years and how far you have come, 
Do you think that they do you think they match? They don't. But um why is that? Like I said, talking about um click. I think to some extent when you because if you're good and you actually tie yourself to a particular clique that is doing really, really well, that actually wants your growth, they can actually push you to an extent to understand. So I can't really say, but then I have a lot of people that we have we actually started together as well that are not anywhere close to where I am today. Do you understand? So for me it's not how far but how well. Do you understand? So I'm still I mean the making out I I want to use a particular word. Um um I'm I'm in progress. I mean there's a particular word I'm 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 looking for. So I'm still in the making. So what what is well for you when you say how far well? What would define as this is how well for you as a person? For me as a person, how is success is you you have to be the one to define your own success. You understand? Sometimes success is not about how much you have, no, how you many kids. Person, how would you, how, how, what would you say, oh, this is well for me? So far, so good. Um, I like the fact that in the industry today, when you want to mention some actors, good actors, if they are being sincere and being real, they will mention GDL. I'm saying what destination would you get to, to define yourself that this is well? Do you understand what I mean? I understand I'm what you mean. Your work, I, I, the I alpha understand hour, what you mean, but you might want to where you see, say, oh, oh I've, I've achieved. achieved. You, Do you, you get what I mean? I get it. You might want is unlimited. I still want to go places. I want to be in some projects. I want to do so many. I want to be able to afford certain things in my life. I want to be able to do a lot for myself. I want to be able to touch lives. I want to be able to impact people. I want to be able to groom people. I want to do a lot. Okay. Yeah. Before I ask a question on the industry, let me go back to this. What is your view of of people's sexual orient orientation in Hollywood? I've had all sorts of conversations about, oh, there are too many gays, there are too many lesbians. They are just doing all sorts of things together and a couple of things. Are they expanding? Are they beginning to owe the industry to ransom? Or these are rumors? These things don't exist. I mean, we were all witness to Kunle Remy's interview of his encounter with somebody with a particular sexual orientation. Now, they said they're scripting into the Yoruba industry deeply. What is your own view? Well, for me, based on my training, my background, my orientation about life generally, this is not a topic I even like to say publicly because we all, it's something that is meant to be that is not meant to even make it to the public to start with. The kind of religion orientation I have and stuff, sex is nothing you, you should even be talking about publicly, you understand? So, talking about people's sexual orientation and stuff, it happens anyway. Whatever sexual orientation you have is none of my business. Are you here to work? Am I, let's face the work, do whatever we want to do and get out. You understand? Regardless of, I don't care who you are, I don't care what you do, you understand? So, but I think people like to digress and be talking about irrelevant stuff when there are main topics to talk about, when there are main facts to look into for the growth of the industry they're into. So whatever you're doing with Mr. A or Mr. B or Mrs. A, it's none, it shouldn't be anybody's business as long as it's not affecting the main, the primary assignment. So would you work with an open gay? When you mean open gay? Is that me that is a gay? Working. I can work with anybody. Okay, okay before you... Before I was trying to take you away from the carcass thing, before Big Sam um, goes went to that uh, route. So before we leave that route, because we are actually running out of time now, I want to ask you a question. You said that by your training, you sh sex is not something you should be talking about, but by your work, a lot of work you do, even the, your biggest work now mm -hmm. that uh, people are talking about. What's the biggest work? <laughs> big the black sheep. Oh. <laughs> That people you, you see that I watch a lot of yes, these things now. Yes, yes, yes. Basically, most of it, it was highly sexually. Does it not tally with your your orient no, uh, your philosophy? That is not Jidea Obono. This is Jidea Obono right here. That is not Jidea. That is a character in the film. I can tell you the black sheep. So what you mean that is if you were on set when we were, you were when we were filming, you can tell how difficult that was. For me, but then as an actor, once you see the camera and your action, you forget yourself and you're someone else. That is one blessing that we have. I could be crying now 
they can give me bad news right now. I'm not feeling as I'm speaking with you right because I'm in front. Of, I had to compose myself. I was coming from a set, and I'm actually down with flu. But then I had to do what I have to do. You understand? So once you hear that action, I don't know. It's the spirit, it's the passion, and stuff. You're already into it. So that's it. You've been doing this for over 20 years, and obviously you've seen the up, the down, the good, the bad, the ugly. What do you think, deep in your mind, that you think needs to change for this industry to move forward? Well, I will take it from the from what affects me as a person. You understand, and um, to some extent, I can't really blame. The, I can't have a lot of money to shoot a party. Of course, sentiments will set in at some points. You can't be hundred percent objective in some decision making and stuff. But then, remuneration comes first, and um, not putting too much sentiment when it comes to casting giving roles to people and all that. When they call for audition, people do well. Let them I can I still go for auditions when they call me. I still go for readings. You understand? But there are times that you go for readings, you go for auditions and at the end of the day you know that yes the production is just trying to make noise or do kind of do a PR for the they already know the cast and crew. You understand? I won't bother calling for audition when I know I have my cast and crew already for a production. So then remuneration is something else again that we really need to it's getting better. And thank God for the big platforms we have now that are collaborating with the producers and stuff, you know, it's getting better. And it's a great time to be a part of the industry. It's getting better, boy. can, it can, we can still do more. Okay. okay. My own last question before, if Sam has a last question. I, when I speak to actors who are already doing well, because I classify you as an actor who is already doing well, okay. and they complain of uh, money, I always wonder, and this is my reason, I look at the average salary of somebody who works in a bank in a month, and I know that most of the actors who are already doing well, in one or one and a half weeks, make that money. Is it that the lifestyle that the actors are living are the reason why they want, uh, they, they keep complaining? I'm not asking anybody, even if uh, Dangote wants more money, but what I'm saying is that they complain that the remuneration is bad. You understand? When you compare yourself with other people, maybe the only people who, who get more money to, than you now are people who are, who are politicians. You understand? <laughs> so tell me, do you think that it's because um, when you work in the arts and you are seen all over, you are supposed to live a certain, a certain lifestyle, lifestyle? That is the reason why you people always complain that the money is not enough. It's not, for me, it's not complaining. It's what is expected. Okay, fine. I know there are expectations. People want you to live certain ways, you understand. But then, as a public figure, there are certain things that you need to really possess, actually, as a public figure. Like you are in the public space, you understand. People will be like, ah, they have one one head. No. We have one one head, truly. But then, do you treat me the way you treat a normal person on the streets? If somebody slaps me on the road and I slap my own back, I'll be in the news that I cannot even calm down. How can he slap his own back? You don't know you are a public figure. How can you can you imagine somebody bashing my car and telling me that hey, the man lost back to What's that? <laughs> Do you understand? So we get a lot of that. So the fact that that's to tell you that yes, Alori made you for real. Because people don't expect you to react certain ways a normal person will react. They remind you all the time. I forget I'm an actor, but people remind you on the street. I want to work on this. I want to wear just my jalami and roam about and do anything. I want to branch anywhere. And buy. But people keep reminding you that you don't belong here. This is your space. Okay, I want to rent an apartment somewhere. Your neighbors are giving you, understand? Once you react, they tag you. You understand? That means you don't, you're not even meant to be living with neighbors. You should be in your own mansion. Some, you know, it's, the, it's the expectations and how people push you to do certain things. They want you to be, oh, you will see yourself in the news. Ah, see where he's even living. Imagine, they cannot even afford. So that alone can be depressing. You understand? That's why a lot of actors are doing what they're not meant to do. So I'm like, okay, you don't want me to go and do a shower. Then the job should be able to make me comfortable to be able to afford certain things for myself. Do you understand? And you can even tell some productions that actually make a lot of money. Okay, let me give you an instance. Uh, uh, let me say, I'm on a particular soap opera. You understand? It was um, premiering or airing on probably AIT for this year. The next year, another year, you see that same content flying on other. Well, you sign an agreement. No reality, no nothing, but the, major, the owner of the production is still making money. Do you understand? But you as an actor, waiting you don't get, you don't get, but they are still showing you everywhere, making money off your craft. Do you understand? So that's where it's a problem here. We don't get enough remuneration, and I know what I'm saying. Okay. There are some actors that you can say you're not doing certain things again, but you should, be, you should still be getting remuneration from some certain projects you've done over the years. 
Okay. okay. Um, uh, that's my last question. The last question, if Sam has a okay. question, but please, in 30 seconds, because we, we are, we are okay. actually out of time okay. now. Okay. Um, I genuinely think that actors are becoming very entitled, especially about this renovation thing. Producers, producers are truly bleeding. These guys put money on project. They are not sure the money is coming back. The money is in their drive for one year, for two years. I mean, I think we need to probably have a sit down. But last but not the least, do you feel, do you feel um, sidetracked? Because some of the big cinema project of some of your mo of your colleagues, both in English and Yoruba, a lot of them don't call you, yes. despite the abundance of talent. As I feel so, and it's something that actually makes me feel really bad. Even you, I'm glad I've spoken to you before about it. Like why you don't call me for your jobs? I really don't know why. I've, I was meant to be on somebody's project too. In fact, they penciled down my name. They pencil down my name, but later I got a call that they replaced my name with someone else. You understand? I'm like, okay. And I was even telling Gabriel one day, I said, Gabriel, ah, well, oh, my mom. He said, they owe me a mansion. Because <laughs> our industry is so funny. When you love it so much, at the end of the day, you might get little or nothing for remuneration. They'll be like, Ashebo Bemini, you understand? So at this stage, I shouldn't be begging for roles. You understand? I should, I should get it on merit. You understand, so thank you so much, GD. A lot to talk about, but so little time. I, you are also rushing off, um, yeah, to set. I'm sure that we'll have time to yes. talk about more of this, and I'm sure that Big Sam will give you. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'm sure that Big Sam will give you <laughs> rose now. Thank you thank so much you. for coming, and I must tell you that, um. You do you what you do. You do so well, and I hope that more and more you um, get there Amen. to where you want to Amen. get to. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having me. All right. Thank you.